Hello and welcome to virtualsheetmusic.com and livingpianos.com. I'm Robert Estrin, your host, with a great question today. What is solfeggio? Solfeggio, sometimes called sight singing, is the ability to be able to read at sight music and sing it. Wow, what a great thing to be able to do. Why is this important? There's a myriad reasons why this is important to instrumentalists, singers, and yes, pianists. It's important to be able to hear the music you play just by looking at it. How do you develop such a thing? Well, there are different systems and each one has different values. So I'm gonna explore them with you today so you can decide for yourself what's in it for you. I grew up with what is called movable do solfege. Now, solfeggio comes with the Latin syllables, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That is essentially what solfege is are those Latin syllables where do is the tonic, the first note of the scale, going on up through the scale degrees. And there are also ways of accounting for the accidentals. Movable do solfege, whatever key you are in, the tonic of that key, of that major key, is do. So if you're in C major, C is do. If you're in D major, D is do. Now why would you want to do that? Because there's another type of solfege called Fixed do solfeggio. Fixed do, C is always do, and re is D, and so on, and they never change. Well, there are benefits to each one. Let's explore this. I'm going to start with fixed do and why that is important. Fixed do is simply naming notes because if you see a C or a C sharp or a C flat or a C double sharp, it's always going to be do, no matter what key your piece is in. Now, why is this useful? Well, it's incredibly important for conductors reading a score to be able to know the absolute pitch of all the notes that they see on that score. Because after all, the scores are transposed, there are different clefts, and being able to instantly know what the actual concert pitch of each note in a score to communicate with the orchestra and understand themselves is imperative. So conductors, by and large, embrace fixed do solfege, so they have a sense of what they're looking at. What is movable do good for then? Why would you want to change the pitch of do? Why should it be in different places? Shouldn't it always be the same? Well, not necessarily. The value of movable do solfege is that you get to hear music in the context of the key, thereby being able to know the notes you're hearing once you know what key you are in. In other words, if you hear a pattern of notes like do, mi, so, you know you've got a, a one chord, a major triad, whether it's in F major, it's always the same do, mi, so, and so on with other patterns. It makes it possible to hear music and to quantify the pitches relative to one another. For people without perfect pitch, this is a great way to be able to transcribe music, to be able to understand the notes you are hearing. Of course, you have to know what key you're in to know the absolute pitch, but it's also a great aid in transposition because if you can put the syllables to what you're hearing in your head, then you can put it into any key quite, quite easily. Movable do solfege is what I grew up with and it's how I hear music. And in fact, I not only use it for hearing when I'm listening to music and to know what, what pitches and harmonies and chords, but I use it even when, when performing because all music is essentially playing by ear, even if you take it up the score to begin with. And to be able to hear the music and to know what, where those pitches are going is tremendous help. And what about the relative minor? How do you account for that? Well, there are two schools of thought on that. The way I was trained is that the key signature determines where do is. So the relative minor then begins on la. And this makes perfect sense, particularly with pieces that go back and forth between the major and the relative minor. For example, a piece with no sharps or flats that's in C major and then goes to A minor back and forth. It can become extremely confusing trying to put the minor on do particularly when the key signature doesn't change. More than that, modes. That is a key signature where you might start on in C major with no sharps or flats. Maybe you'd have D Dorian, no sharps or flats with all the white keys. It's much easier just to call D Ray in that case since there's no sharps or flats. Others like to change the tonic and put Do on each tonic 
of the modes, which is a very difficult thing. If any of you out there have mastered that, I'd love to hear from you. The last thing that we haven't talked about is how to account for accidentals. As I mentioned earlier, in fixed dough solfeggio, accidentals are not accounted for. Dough, whether it's a C, has got a sharp or a double sharp or a flat, it's just dough. But in movable dough solfege, you account for the syllables in the following manner. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, do, ti, te, la, le, so, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. That's the way it works. And so all the pitches are quantified with precision this way. Now, sometimes if you're, if you're sight singing atonal music, fixed dough makes a heck of a lot more sense because, you know, how do you account for uh, accidentals that are double sharps when there is no tonic? So there are definitely times when fixed dough is the correct choice. And there are, is also tremendous value in movable dough solfege. And there are other systems that use numbers and set type notation. These are things we can explore in future videos for you. Thanks so much for joining me. Robert Estrin here at virtualsheetmusic.com and livingpianos.com.